eco-creature. Welcome to eco-creature! The first step is to build a creature! Be sure to log in if you want to save your creature or retrieve one you've already made! Click meter in the game if you need help! Here's a better choice. Great job! Great job! Great job!
Great job! B. Great job! Someone threw a can here. Should you A. Leave it alone, or B. Take it to recycle? B. Great job! Recycling creates new things out of old things. It also keeps things out of the trash. Less trash means a cleaner environment. B. Great job! B. Great job! Great job! Great job! Here's a better choice. B. Great job! B. Great job! Great job! Someone threw a can here. Should you A. Leave it alone, or B. Someone threw a can here. Should you A. Leave it alone, or B. Take it to recycle? B. Great job! Recycling creates new things out of old things. It also keeps things out of the trash. Less trash means a cleaner environment. Great job! Great job!
Great job! Great job! Need help? B. Great job! Great job! Eco House. Welcome to Eco House! The sun is rising and it's time to get ready to go to school. You're about to jump out of bed and eat breakfast. Then you'll have ten minutes before the bus arrives. Look all around your house to be sure everything is okay before you leave. Your score will change the world health and affect your eco creature if you have saved one. The bus will be here in 10 minutes. Check all around the house to be sure everything is okay before you leave. It's nice to help out mom and dad with the dishes. After you wash the dish, do you dry the dish with a dry the dish with a fabric dish towel. Dry the dish with a fabric dish towel. Dry the dish with a Great job. You can only use a paper towel once before you have to throw it away, but a fabric dish towel can be reused hundreds of times. What should you do with these food scraps? Use them to compost. Throw them in the trash. Use them, use them to compost. Great job! Composting is a really cool way to recycle. Have your parents help you take vegetable and fruit scraps and chop them in a blender. Then add a bit to your plants. Over time, it decomposes and helps your plants grow. Somebody left the water running. Do you want to? Shut it off. Leave it running. Shut it off. Great job! Water is a precious resource that we use for drinking and growing food. Shut off the water when you're done so you don't waste a drop. The water heater is set to 160 degrees to make the water really hot. Do you want to? Leave, leave it at the hot temperature. Ask your dad to lower it to one. Ask your dad to lower it. Great job! The temperature in a water heater is controlled by adjusting. 
Ask your parents to set the temperature to 120 degrees to save energy. Can you think of other things that you could do with the money saved? Your parents are going to buy a new washer. Do you want to? Tell them to get a washer that lets you put clothes in the top of the washer. Ask them to get a washer that lets you put clothes in the front of the washer to save water. Great job! Washing machines that you load from the front use about half the water of washing machines that load from the top. The water save means cleaner streams, rivers, and lakes for wildlife to use and you to enjoy. The clothes from the dry cleaner came back on these hangers. Do you want to? Take, take the hangers back to the dry cleaner so they can be used again. Throw the hangers away. Take the, hang, take the hangers. Great job! It's always better to reuse things than to throw them away. Most dry cleaners love to get hangers back so they can use them again. Great job! It's always better to reuse things than to throw them away. Most dry cleaners love to get hangers back so they Great job! Somebody left the water running. Do you want to? Shut it off. Shut it off. Great job! Water is a precious resource that we use for drinking and growing food. Shut off the water when you're done so you don't waste a drop. The car is really dirty. Do you want to? Help your dad wash the car. Go with your dad to the car wash. Help your dad wash the car. Here's a better choice. A car wash uses only 30 gallons of water to clean your car, and the water is filtered and used for more car washes. Cleaning your car at home uses five times as much water and sends dirty water into storm drains, lakes, and ponds. After you come home from school this afternoon, you're going to go play with a friend. After you come home from school this Great job! Riding a bike is more than good exercise. It saves gas and keeps the air healthy. Great job! Your parents have a printer at home. When it runs out of paper, do you... Take the used printer paper, flip the writing side over, and put it back in the tray. Great job! 
Using the other side of the paper for printing will save twice as much paper as using only one side. Great job! Using the other... The bathroom sink is looking a bit dirty. Do you want to clean it with vinegar and baking soda? Clean it with a chemical cleaning product. Clean it with vinegar and... Great job! Chemicals can get into the water we drink if we pour them down the drain, so natural cleaners like vinegar and baking soda are more eco-friendly choices. Great job! Chemicals can... Time to go. The bus is here. You got a score of... Forest. Hi, I'm Angelina, and this is Pongo. <laughs> We live near this beautiful forest. Let's take a walk into the woods to see the waterfall. Grandma, can you come with us to the waterfall? <laughs> of course, dear. You know how much I love walking in the forest. What do I always say? Listen to, to the leaves dancing, dancing in the wind, in the wind and see how the tree branches reach, reach for the sky. sky. I'm going to tell you a story about when I was a girl. Oh, Grandma, I love your story. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I lived near a tropical rainforest in Costa Rica. Each day I walked to a hidden waterfall. It was my favorite place in the world. I remember the sounds of chattering monkeys, the spongy warm earth beneath my feet, and the sight of delicate white orchids and light green palm trees along my path. Wow, that's very different from my forest. Yes, in this forest ecosystem, there are different plants and animals. The path is covered in pine needles. You see, deer, squirrels, and beavers, and the trees turn golden in the fall. <laughs> there it is, the waterfall. Forests are beautiful, but they are also very important. Trees like these provide most of the oxygen we all breathe to live, but forests of all kinds are in danger. How can a forest be in danger? Grandma, why do you say the forest ecosystems are in danger? Well, people use the trees from the forest for many things. Trees become paper or wood to build houses and furniture. Wood is burned to keep people warm. Many people's jobs depend on the forest as well. The need for wood and paper is so great that sometimes entire areas are clear-cut and no trees remain. Did you know that here in the U.S., logging and development have destroyed over 95% of the original forests? Really? And it's happening all over the world. The monarch butterfly's winter forest home in Mexico is in danger. So are the Siberian tiger's forests in Russia. And jaguars habitat in the Amazon rainforest. But don't people realize that when they cut down trees, the animals will have no place to live? Yes, many people realize the problems. And many people have different opinions on how to solve them. Unlike some resources, though, trees are a renewable resource. That means people can help the earth by planting new trees. This is sometimes called re-leafing. If we plant trees, we help the earth because the trees clean the air we breathe and provide a home for plants and animals. Their roots hold soil in place, and this helps to keep rivers and streams clean. So planting trees is a way for us to do something good for the earth? I guess we should plant some trees, Grandma. That's a great idea, Angelina. Let me show you something. 
since trees are a renewable resource, we can plant trees to help the earth, right? That's right, dear. Do you see these people here? They are people who are part of a local group that wants to help the environment by planting trees. Soon this empty field will be beautiful once again. So many people are helping out. This is great. Do you think we can help too? I'm sure they would love to have our help. Let's go join them. People are planting trees around the world for many different reasons. Sometimes they replace forests that are destroyed by wildfires or logging. They can also make a home for threatened or endangered species. When people realize how much the forest gives us, they'll want to do something to help. You're right, our group is planting more than 50 trees. But what about the rainforest where you grew up? I'm too far away to plant trees. Trees there? No, you can't plant trees there, but you can raise money that can be used by others to help conserve the rainforest. Maybe we can have a concert at school and use the money we raise selling tickets to help the tropical rainforest. That's a great idea, dear. We can ask your parents, your teachers, and your friends to help. Look at the ecosystem where you live and try to find places where trees can be planted. Do you think planting trees can help? Morning is my favorite time to walk along the beach. Mine too. You can hear the seagulls breathe the morning and the smell of salt is in the air. I love to watch the sun rising behind the boats. Dad! Look at the crab! It's amazing how many different plants and animals are part of the aquatic ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things that interact with each other. Let's see what else we can see under the water, Seth. Isn't that a jellyfish, Dad? Yes, it is. Do you see the starfish? Look, it has five arms. Dad, remember last summer when we were trying to catch frogs at the pond? We followed the stream until it emptied into the pond. I remember we didn't catch any frogs. The pond is very different than what we see here in the ocean, but... But both the pond and the ocean are aquatic ecosystems. So are lakes, coral reefs, wetlands, and rivers. We saw dragonflies and beetles in the water. What's the name of that plant that looked like it was growing on top of the water? That was called duckweed. Remember how fast the minnows swim around our legs? Lakes, rivers, ponds, coral reefs, and wetlands don't look alike. It seems strange to think that they're all aquatic ecosystems. Most of the Earth is covered with water. All of the different aquatic ecosystems are home to different kinds of plants and animals. Well, the ocean is my favorite. There's so much to do here. I love to ride the waves, build sandcastles, and play football on the beach with my friends. I feel the same way you do, Seth. I used to come to the ocean with my family. We spent endless summer days at the beach. I never got tired of it. I think my favorite sound in the entire world is the sound of waves crashing. Look at all that ugly garbage. Every week it seems to get worse. It makes me angry too, Seth. The ocean is a beautiful place that we enjoy. Trash is a pollution problem that threatens all aquatic ecosystems. Don't people realize that many different species of plants and animals need water? Why is trash a threat to the ocean, Dad? Trash floating in the ocean and water washing up on beaches is a pollution problem that threatens all aquatic ecosystems. Did you know that almost all of the garbage in the ocean is washed in from the shore or dumped into the water? Where does the rest come from? It comes from boats out in the water. And most of it is plastic, which is indestructible. What is indestructible? It means that it can't be broken down into smaller pieces. Do you mean like one of my plastic toys? Exactly. Garbage isn't the only threat to the aquatic ecosystems. Sometimes oil tankers spill oil into the ocean. One oil spill can kill thousands of plants and animals. That is terrible, Dad. My teacher told us that overfishing can hurt the oceans, too. He is right, Seth. We eat fish, but many species of fish are becoming rare because of overfishing. And sometimes dolphins or sharks are killed in the fishing nets. That sounds terrible. What are people doing to stop this? One way to help is by attaching beepers to the fishing nets. The sound helps sharks and dolphins stay away from the fishing nets so they won't be caught. You know, Dad, I know I can't do everything to help the ocean, but I think we can do something. Well, what were you thinking about? I want to have a beach cleanup. That's a great idea, Seth. My friends are helping me put posters up at school and at different places around our town. I am glad so many people are here to help. When you care about the Earth, you take the time to do something to help it. I think a lot of people really love the ocean and want to take care of it. Dad, all these people have worked all day long and the beach is really clean. Maybe we should do this every month. That sounds like a great plan, Seth. Why don't you talk to everyone who is helping today? One woman took photographs of our cleanup and is going to email them to me. I'm going to put them on our class website so I can show everyone at school what we did. That's a great idea, Seth. Maybe we will get even more people to help next month. I feel really good about what we did today. Don't you, Dad? I couldn't agree with you more, Seth. Do you think it is important to help the Earth in your town?
grasslands. Hi, I'm Leslie, and this is Grandpa Joe. We live in a type of grassland called a prairie. Every time I go to my grandpa's house, we take a walk on the prairie. Come along with us. Look. There's a monarch butterfly on a butterfly milkweed plant. When the monarch butterfly caterpillar eats the milkweed, it stores a chemical in its body that is poisonous to birds. That keeps it from being eaten by birds. That's right, Leslie. That's one of the ways plants and animals work together to survive on the prairie. Leslie, did you know that our ancestors used the milkweed plant to to make medicines to help heal colds in their throats and lungs? I didn't. That's amazing. Grandpa, are all grasslands prairies? No. A grassland is an ecosystem that has more grasses than trees or bushes. Our prairie is a temperate grassland. That means we have times of little or no rain and freezing winters and hot summers. The plants and animals that live here have special ways to protect themselves from the climate. Many animals live underground to protect themselves from the weather. These plants have long roots so that they can find water when there is little or no rain. Also, long roots help to stop them from being torn out of the ground when the wind whips across the prairie. Some roots can grow as deep as five feet. Wow, that's taller than me. What is another kind of grassland? There are also tropical grasslands. They are found closer to the equator where it is hot all year. They have some trees growing on them. It also rains for months at a time, followed by no rain. Oh, like an African savanna. We learned about Africa in school. I'm happy to see that you have a respect for the prairie. Grasslands are one of the most endangered ecosystems in the world. Really? Why are they endangered? Grandpa, can you explain why the grassland ecosystems are in danger? Of all the ecosystems, grasslands are the rarest ecosystem in North America. Really? Why? This land was very different before the pioneers settled here. Herds of bison and antelope roamed the land. Almost all of the natural prairie has disappeared, and now the land is covered with farms and cities and towns. But don't the farms feed people? Yes, the prairie's rich soil helps to feed the world, and that is important. But we are losing native plants and animals to farms and cities. It's important to save native plants and animals. They are part of the prairie's life. Besides, you never know what medicines or cures for diseases might come from a plant or animal that lives on the prairie. See that red poppy over there? The drug codeine, which is added to common pain medicines, comes from a poppy plant. What about grasslands in the rest of the world? Are they in trouble too? Yes, it's sad, but grasslands are in trouble in other places around the world. Grasslands in some parts of Africa, the Middle East, and Asia are being overgrazed. This means that the grass can't grow fast enough to feed the animals. When this happens, the land often turns into a desert. Grandpa, I just had a thought. What if our prairie disappears? I would really miss coming here, and these animals and plants wouldn't have a place to live. Is there anything we can do to help? I want you to meet some friends of mine and see how we spend some of our free time. Let's go see what people are doing to restore prairie lands. They want to make sure their children will know what the prairie used to look like. This is exciting. This land looks really sad. Do you think we can really restore it? Well, it will never return to what it was like when this land was all one big wild prairie. What we can do is plant native plants and grasses. They will attract native animals to this spot. What job are you going to do? I think I'll pick up the trash and the dead plants and pull out the thistles and bushes. What are you going to do to help? I'm going to be a seed handler. Seed handlers harvest, clean, and mix seed from the healthy part of the land. When the seed is ready, we'll plant in the bare spots that you see here. This will help keep the thistles and bushes that you are pulling out from growing back. In a few years after these plants have taken hold, we will burn this area every year or two. What? Why would you want to hurt the prairie? Actually, fire is a grassland's friend. Fires happen naturally on prairies. It helps the native grasses and wildflowers to grow. Do you think people are planting grass seeds in other parts of the world? You can count on it, Leslie. I'm sure right now people in Africa and other places are planting grass seeds too. They don't want to lose the grasslands to the desert. This place looks great. It was hard work, but it was worth it. It feels good to work together to save a bit of the prairie. I want to keep working on these projects. I'll talk to my friends too. I'm sure they'll want to help save the prairie. That's a great idea. Do you think it's important to save native plants and animals? Desert. Hi, I'm Diane. And I'm Jake. We're going to walk to the dune. We're going to take pictures and collect information about the desert to send to my new pen pal. She's never seen the desert before. 
What should I tell her? You should tell her about the weather. Tell her that it's usually warm here and that it gets really hot in the summer. Don't forget to tell her that it hardly ever rains. Take a picture of that creosote bush. This plant really knows how to take care of itself. It has terrible tasting and smelling leaves so that animals don't eat it for dinner. Its leaves close during the day so it doesn't dry out, but they open at night to collect moisture. It has two root systems, one that grows deep and one that is near to the surface. That way, it can get the water it needs from the top or below the ground. Make sure you tell her how the kangaroo rats can turn the seeds they eat into water. Oh, and tell her about the adult tortoise that can go six years without drinking water. When you think about it, desert animals are very amazing. Here we are. I love the patterns the sand makes on the dunes. Look, a lizard. He's digging under the sand. It's getting warm out. I'm sure he went down there to cool off. Let's just sit here for a while and enjoy the desert. It's so beautiful and quiet here. I could stay here all day. What's that noise? Can you hear it? How are people hurting the desert? Sometimes people riding dirt bikes. Like destroy plants and animals' habitats. The desert is very delicate and doesn't recover easily. Let's head back home. Yeah, some people just see the dunes as piles of sand. They don't take the time to see the plants and animals that live here. It's not only the sand dunes that are in trouble. Every year, more and more desert is lost when houses and businesses are built on the desert. Water is also becoming a big problem on a lot of deserts. People moving to the desert can mean less water for the plants and animals living here. Look, see those people camping with their trailer? I know people like to get away and go camping. They should camp at a place that is set up for campers. Can I see the postcard that you got from your pen pal today? Sure. She says she's living with her parents on a research station in the middle of Antarctica for a year. She writes here that the area in Antarctica where she is staying is also a desert. Even though it isn't hot there, it's dry, and they get less than three inches of snow a year. Hey, she writes that tourism is hurting that ecosystem too. I think we should do something to help protect the desert. Maybe we could teach kids that it's important to treat the desert with respect and care. That's a great idea. Let's show kids that the desert isn't just a pile of sand with a few plants growing on it. If we teach kids to respect the desert, maybe they will make good decisions about the desert in the future. I do have to say that riding those dirt bikes look like fun. I know what you mean. Isn't there some way that people can ride dirt bikes without hurting the desert? I just read about a local group that is working to turn a large part of this desert into a national park. That's a great idea. A national park can have set places for people to camp and ride bikes, and places where the desert will be protected. Turning part of the desert into a national park would also stop houses from being built in that area. I'm sure there's something we can do to help. The article said they were raising money for the project. I know. Let's have a walkathon. We can put up signs at school all around town. Adults sometimes write letters to Congress. Can kids write letters too? Of course we can. Hey, let's look up the addresses of our people in Congress and pass out flyers at the walkathon. We can write to our state senators and representatives and ask them to keep the desert life in mind when voting on new rules about where people can build houses and factories. I'm excited. These are great ideas. I can't wait to get started on something that will help protect our desert. Look at the ecosystem where you live. Are there things that you could do to protect your ecosystem? Tundra. Hi. Hi, I'm Arbalak, and this is my new friend, Matt. Matt is visiting me at my home on the tundra this summer. Wow, this place is so different from where I live. I hope you can teach me all about the tundra. Let's go for a walk. I want to show you something. It's midnight. How come it's still light out? The sun doesn't set here in the summer. That's cool. Yeah, but the winters seem very long when the sun doesn't rise for a few months. Wow, what are those? Those are musk oxen. What is that plant they're eating? The fossils look like fuzzy white caterpillars. It's actually a willow tree. In other parts of the world, this willow tree could grow to be 30 feet tall. On the tundra, plants are small because they only have 50 to 60 days to grow every year. See how the plants grow together? That's how they protect themselves from the wind and the cold. That is amazing. How come the ground feels... The ground feels so soggy. It's called permafrost. Below this soil is a layer that is always frozen. When the earth heats up and melts the snow, it can sink into the ground so the top layer stays soggy. These plants are so small, they don't seem very important. Actually, the tundra takes in more carbon dioxide than it releases. That means the tundra... Tundra helps the whole planet stay healthy. What do animals do in the winter? There isn't much food in the winter, so some animals hibernate, and others go to warmer weather. See that bird? It's an arctic tern. It flies all the way to Antarctica for the winter. The tundra is very fragile, and some, some people are worried about its future. Really? Why are people worried about the tundra? Well, people are arguing about drilling for oil in the Alaskan wilderness. It's a big deal around here. Here, it seems like everyone has a different idea about what they should do. What do you think, Arvalek? I'm not sure. Some people say our country really needs the oil, and that they have pretty safe ways of getting the oil out without doing a lot of damage to the wilderness. What do other people say? Some people don't think they would really get enough oil to make a big difference, and that it could hurt the fragile environment. People also worry that it would hurt the parks so that people couldn't enjoy them. I can see both sides of this problem. What can I do to help when I go back home? I just might have an idea. I read about a girl named Savannah who came up with an idea for a way to save oil instead of drilling new wells in the Alaskan Arctic tundra. What was her idea? When she was in second grade, she studied the tundra and did a report on the Great Wolf. She felt a strong connection with the Arctic tundra. 
When she heard about Arctic drilling, she became worried that it might hurt the tundra and the animals that live there. What did she do? She learned that many people don't put enough air in their car's tires. This wastes around 4 million gallons of gas a day. Savannah wants kids to help her spread the word to drivers on Earth Day, so she started Pump Em Up. She thinks that if Americans pumped up their tires, we would save as much oil as could be produced in the Arctic tundra. That's exciting. When I go home, I'm going to share what I learned about the tundra with the kids in my school and organize some Pump Em Up activities for Earth Day. I think there are a lot of things that kids can do to help our planet. What do you think? Garbage and recycling. I like when we watch movies in class, don't you, Jack? I think they're fun. This one's about recycling. Did you ever wonder what happens when you throw out a piece of trash? Come follow me and you will see. When you throw trash out, it is picked up by a gar garbage truck. When trash is not recycled, it ends up buried in a landfill. A landfill is a huge, huge hole filled with trash. The garbage can stay in a landfill for a long, long time, and this can contaminate the groundwater underneath the landfill. The garbage can make the water that flows under the landfill dirty. This polluted water can hurt plants, animals, and people. Sometimes trash is burned. This pollutes the air. We can help by reusing things, like rechargeable batteries and making less trash to begin with. For example, when you pack lunch, put your sandwich in a reusable plastic container, and remember to recycle whenever you can. Remember, trash is dirty and can make people and animals sick. The less trash you make, the more you help keep the planet healthy. Watch what happens when you recycle glass, paper, plastic, tin, and aluminum cans. When glass is recycled, it is cleaned, crushed, mixed with sand, soda, ash, and limestone, melted, molded, and blown into a new shape. When paper is recycled, it is sorted, screened, cleaned, de-inked, heated, dried, and squeezed. It is then made into new paper. If you use less paper by recycling, then fewer trees will have to be cut down in the first place. When plastic is recycled, it is washed and cut into small pieces. It is then made into new things, such as carpeting, flower pots, toys, or mats. When tin cans are recycled, they are, they are soaked in chemicals and washed. When aluminum cans are recycled, they are melted, cleaned, and reinforced with new aluminum. It is then made into new cans, or may be used in planes, cars, ships, or signs. It is important to recycle. It is a great way to help the Earth, because you help protect the Earth and make less trash. I really liked the video Miss King showed us this morning in class. I bet we can do something about recycling. Come on, Emma. What difference can we make? We're just kids. Kids can make a difference. A girl named Cory Johnson was nine years old when she started Children for a Safe Environment. She didn't let being a kid stop her. Cory helped kids learn how to fight against companies that pollute air and water. My mom and I read about it in a magazine. Why don't we start a school recycling club? There are a lot of simple things we can do that make a big difference. That sounds like a good idea, Emma. I hope the posters we put up will get a lot of kids to come to our meeting. Let's learn more about what it means to reduce, recycle, and reuse. There are lots of things we can reuse and recycle every day. I buy rechargeable batteries so I can use them again and again. I also donate old clothes and computer parts so others can use them. What did you find out about recycling? Did you know the average American throws out 61 pounds of tin cans a year? I'm 9 years old and I weigh 60 pounds. It takes 10 times as much energy to produce a new piece of paper than it does to make a copy on the second side. I'll remember that the next time I throw out a piece of paper. Listen to this. Americans throw away enough steel every year to build all the new cars made in America. I was really surprised when I found out how much waste was in my school. Lunch. I should be using a lunchbox instead of a paper bag. And juice boxes are really bad for the environment because they don't break down in landfills. Wow, we really learned a lot about garbage and recycling. Make sure you share what you learned with your families and friends. Now that we know how important it is to recycle, we can start right now to make a difference. Do you think it is important to help the earth by recycling in your community? Certain gases in the atmosphere that can raise the Earth's temperature. 
Higher temperatures can cause stronger storms, a rise in ocean water levels, and hotter summers. This could cause our beaches to become smaller, cause heat sickness in people, and hurt plants and animals. Whoa! Dirty air can make it harder for the plants we eat to grow. Dirty air can even eat away at the stones that are used for buildings and statues. A number of things can cause air pollution. Cars and trucks are one of the, the biggest causes of air pollution. Cars with black smoke coming from their tailpipes cause more pollution than clean running cars. This black smoke can bother people's eyes, noses, throats, and lungs. Using electricity also adds to the problem. See what happens when you waste electricity? <laughs> Shut off the faucet, Gabe. We fill the bucket to the top. Did you ever wonder where the water in the faucet comes from? I'm going to watch a video about water in the listening center, guys. Why don't you come watch it with me? Come join me on an adventure with water! Water is all around us. We watch it fall from the sky, fill our sinks, and flow smoothly down a long, lazy river. We see birds drink from rain puddles, dolphins leap over ocean waves, and we dive into cool, clear lakes on hot summer days. Did you ever wonder why water is so important to human beings? Water makes up more than two-thirds of the weight of our bodies, and we need water to make our bodies work. The main way we get water is by drinking it. Long ago, people were able to drink water from our river streams and brooks. Today, many of our water sources are polluted. This comes from garbage, factories, and chemicals that people put on lawns and farm fields that wash into water. It also comes from chemicals in the air that fall to the earth when it rains. Drinking water is treated to make sure that it is clean. This happens in a water treatment plant. Water treatment plants can't remove some chemicals. Since less than 1% of the Earth's water is usable for drinking, it is important not to waste water or cause pollution. We can help save water and stop water pollution by the things we do every day. There are many things you can do to prevent water pollution. When it rains or when people use sprinklers or hoses on their streets or yards, sometimes the water carries things like paints, chemicals, motor oil, and grass clippings into storm drains. This dirty water then flows into local rivers, streams, and eventually into the ocean. Dirty water can hurt people, plants, and animals. Cities and towns often have special days set aside to collect chemicals like paint and motor oil. Second, don't use pesticides on your lawn. They can leak into the groundwater and cause pollution. When you go to the supermarket, try to buy organic fruits and vegetables because they are usually grown without pesticides. No litter. Anything that floats can end up in a body of water and cause pollution. When water is filled with our trash, it hurts fish and aquatic life. Birds, fish, and other wildlife can get hurt if they eat or get caught in filthy plastic. Pollution can then move through the food chain all the way to the food we eat. Fighting water pollution is important, but it is also important to conserve the water we have on Earth. Everyone can help to conserve water, and you know what you, you can do. When you brush your teeth, turn off the faucet. Take short showers instead of baths. When you garden, choose plants that are native and don't need a lot of water. You can collect rain from your downspout and use it to water your plants. Fill a pitcher of water for drinking and keep it in the refrigerator instead of running the kitchen faucet to get cold water. Don't use water to clean your driveway or sidewalk. A broom is a better choice. 
And don't forget, you can join a local environment group to learn more about caring for the Earth. Ask your parents and teachers about groups in your area. I didn't realize how much I could do to help. Thanks, Thanks Chico. Chico. Plants and animals. Leah, look at the blue jays up in that tree. It must be springtime. I can hear the birds chirping when I wake up. It's amazing that even in the middle of the city, there are so many plants and animals. There are maple and oak trees, beautiful tulips, and patches of green grass all around. They're all really important to us. Why would a little bird be that important to me? All plants and animals make a difference in our lives. That bird takes the seeds of the tree it lives in and spreads them around. Those seeds grow into trees to make more oxygen for us to breathe. Everything on the earth is connected to each other in something called a food chain. Tell me more, Leah. A food chain is a series of plants and animals linked by their food relationships. There are four main parts of a food chain. The first part of a food chain is the sun. The sun provides energy for everything on the planet. Then there are producers, like green plants. They make their own food. Then there are consumers. People are consumers because we eat other things. And last but not least, there are decomposers, like worms. They break down foods. Here is how a food chain might work. A rabbit eats grass, and then a fox eats a rabbit. Or a chicken eats corn, and then man eats a chicken. A food web is a series of linked food chains. Now I see how we are all connected to each other. When you see how we are all connected, it helps you understand some of the threats to plants and animals on the earth and what an endangered species is. Tell me more, Leah. What threats? All the plants and animals on the planet are part of food chains and food webs. If one animal disappears, it can set off a chain reaction affecting many others. An endangered species is a plant or animal that is in danger of disappearing from the face of the earth if its situation is not improved. If it hasn't been seen in the wild for over 50 years, it's extinct. This is important because then the food chain is broken. How does a species become endangered? Well, it can happen in many ways. Sometimes homes and businesses are built in places that destroy animal and plant homes. Pollution from factories can run into rivers and streams and destroy animal and plant habitats. Logging and clearing land for crops can destroy animal and plant homes. Dumping trash into the ocean can hurt marine plants and animals. Can we do something to protect endangered species, Leah? There are a lot of things we can do, Shayna. We have to protect endangered species from disappearing because we don't want the food chain to be broken. If this happens, other plants and animals that depend on that species to live will also be threatened. What can we do to make sure that won't happen? I was thinking maybe we could try to find out what is happening to endangered species around the world. My class is part of an email project that connects classrooms all over the globe. I'm going to send some emails. Leah, come let's read some of the emails I have received. Hi, Shayna. It was great to get your email. We're doing a project on endangered species in my fourth grade class. And since Hawaii is the endangered species capital of the world, I guess it's a good idea. We always use native plants, like Ilima, Aali'i, and Miliwili in our yard. This is important because non-native plants are a threat to native plants. Even Hawaii's state flower, the hibiscus, is an endangered species. Since we get a lot of visitors from outside of Hawaii, we tell them never to bring plants, fruits, or vegetables with them. Lena. It sounds like Lena and her family are taking action to help endangered species in Hawaii. I'm getting emails from all over the world from people telling me about the endangered species where they live. Here are some more. I'll read one now. Hi, Shana. I live in, in Africa, and rhinos are endangered here. Rhinoceros have existed on Earth for more than 50 million years, but they have been almost wiped out entirely in the last 50 years. Poachers kill rhinos for their horns. Their homes are being destroyed by man. My family is writing letters and raising money to protect the rhinos from disappearing. I'm sending some photos of this incredible animal. Anton. Hey, Shana, do you know about the Siberian tigers? They live in the forests of Eastern Asia, Northern China, and Manchuria. They are an endangered species. There are less than 5,000 tigers living in the wild. Some of the reasons why they are endangered are because of mining, cutting down forests to build roads, and poaching. We are planting trees to restore the tiger's habitat. Michael. Hi, Shana. I live in a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest part of the U.S. It is very different from a tropical rainforest. The ocean currents bring rain, fog, and clouds here. The trees are very, very tall and very old here. In this forest, the elk were once hunted and became endangered. Now the herd is steady again and the elk is no longer endangered. Avery. Hi, Shana. I really like the Venus flytrap because it is a plant that eats flies. This plant is an endangered species in North and South Carolina. The Venus flytrap's home is being destroyed by development. If you want one, it is best to buy one from a plant nursery rather than take one from its natural habitat. I am sending you a picture of this plant. Jillian. I guess there are a lot of things that can be done to help endangered species around the world. 
That's right, Shayna. And learning is the first step towards making changes in the world. Would you like to learn more about endangered species? future. Inventions. There are many easy things you can do every day to keep the earth healthy. Whoa! You can recycle and reuse things like grocery bags and batteries. You can be careful to keep trash and chemicals out of the water. When you are done using the TV or computer, you can save electricity by shutting them off. You can also help keep the air clean by riding your bike instead of taking your car. But what about the future? Ooh, that will be different. Some people have come up with really neat ways to try to reuse and recycle. And this is just the start. Let's take a look. Did you know that there are companies that make t-shirts out of recycled soda bottles? Or that old bicycle tires can be recycled into floor mats for your house? Future field trip. The things that we do today can make the world healthy or sick in the future. That's why even little things we do, like recycle a bottle or close the refrigerator, can help. Come with me on a field trip to the future, and I'll show you how you can help change the world. Wow! Here we are at the beach. Let's see what the beach might look like in 20 years if people don't take care of the environment. Do you see all the trash? No one wants to swim in the water. There are not many fish either. A lot of the birds have moved away now too, and there are a lot of insects like ticks and mosquitoes which can bite you and cause disease. Look at the seashore. It eroded after a big boat harbor was built nearby. The deep harbor keeps the sand from moving in the waves, so water covers more of the beach. That means that animals and people have a lot less beach to enjoy. Now let's see what it may look like in 20 years if lots of people take care of the environment. Look, there's a lot less trash. The water you swim in is clean, and there are so many fish. There are also more sand, sand dunes, and grasses. That means there are more places for birds, insects, crowds, and other shorelines to live. A bigger seashore also protects beach houses that are close to the water. Now let's take a future field trip to the forest, where you can go camping and hiking. What may the forest look like in 20 years if people don't take care of it? It looks like most of the big old trees have been cut down. Now there aren't many places for birds or animals to live. When they lose their homes, animals have to look for new places to live, and they may come to cities where they can be killed by cars or pets. It's sad to see so much trash left in the forest. It isn't a very pretty place to hike anymore, is it? Now let's see what the forest may look like in 20 years if people take care of the environment. Wow, look at all the animals and birds that live here. The big old trees that shelter them are so beautiful and green. The people that hike through the forest and camp here are very careful not to leave trash behind that might make the animals sick. Our last stop is the big city. I wonder what it may look like in 20 years if people don't take care of it. The landfill is really big because people aren't recycling. There are so many cars on the roads. The sky looks dirty and the air smells bad. That makes it hard for many trees to grow. The city doesn't look like a very nice place to live anymore, does it? Now let's see what the city may look like in 20 years if people take care of it. It looks like people are walking, biking, carpooling, and driving cars that don't pollute as much as they used to. That makes the air so much clearer to breathe. Look at all the trees along the streets. They provide houses for animals and birds, and shade to keep your house comfortable without using as much electricity. 
There's so many people that recycle and reuse that the landfill is much smaller. You can help change the future by thinking about the things you do today. What are some ways you're helping to make the future a better place? 